This is the program that you'll be working with in the second exercise in data structures. This is the completed version of the program where the comparator classes have been built because I wanted to run it under debug to show you how it works. In the version that you have when you first capture it, of course you have some big red X's, which means it's not going to run because you still have a bit of work to do. The thing that I want to focus on at the moment is what it means to create the array list and add some things to it. We've already talked about in a previous lecture period the act of creating individual book objects, so I'll very briefly review that when we get there, but my focus is what's happening down here. So to begin, just to set the stage, I want to set a breakpoint. I'm doing a right mouse button click here to toggle a breakpoint on. Breakpoint is there. I'm going to begin execution under debug. As soon as I do that, it flips me over to the debug perspective or the de debug view, most importantly showing me the variables window here. In your screen organization, you probably won't see the variables window over to the right. Depends on how it was configured. You can always go to the window area and open a perspective or open a view and here I can get at the variables to open it this way and drag it around. But I'll let you configure the window however you want. Program execution has suspended here. I know that for a couple of reasons. The green line tells me that program execution is sitting there. In addition, there is a blue arrow over top of the blue dot. The blue dot was the breakpoint. The blue arrow is the current execution point. This line of code in green has not actually yet been executed. The evidence for that is there's nothing over here in the variables section that shows me that that line's been executed. Let me execute that line. I'm going to hit F6. You can also click on the button. So that line has now been executed. The variable, book Lord of the Rings, has been created because it's a local variable that is declared and defined in that section of the code. It's on the stack. So book Lord of the Rings, little variable, and it's storing right now the number 19. What's 19? Ah, that's the location information of a newly constructed book object. And when I click on this arrow, I get to see all of the detailed information associated with that book object. As I continue executing, you'll see that a whole bunch of additional books are being made. Fine. This first style of book creation uses the builder design pattern and I'm not teaching you that in this course, I'm just showing you that as an example because increasingly in the Java environment the builder design pattern is is made available and increasingly is being used. This would be the older style having a new book and the big line through just means I've identified this as a deprecated um, approach to doing it. But it still does the same thing. You'll see that there will be three new stack-oriented variables, reference twos, that are created over here. Here they come. One, two, three. And so they effectively have the same style, the same structure. In all cases, all of these are reference to books and each of them has a book object that it's looking at. Well, let me continue on with execution and I'm going to set a breakpoint down here. Well, actually, I'm already here. Let's talk about what this means. I want to create a new array list. Well, obviously over here, no array list object yet exists, nor does the variable list books. List books is a locally defined variable inside this method, method main. So it's going to be on the stack. Ah, but new. No. New means that there's some newly allocated memory that's going to be created on the heap that will have the array list. So now I allow this line of code to execute, which I do with F6. There it appears. List of books, local variable. In fact, see the L there? Mm, L is for local. This local variable in this method stores the value 36. Well, what's inside that? Well, it depends on something up here, and this you kind of have to pay attention to. Notice this button up here. It says, show logical structure. Oh, I just clicked it. Nothing is shown. I click it again. 
Now, in this mode, what I'm seeing is what an array list really consists of. It consists of three elements element data, mod count, size. And indeed, element data itself is just a reference to an array of 10 objects. Oh, there it is. All empty because, or rather, each of the elements in that array contains the value null because it's not pointing at anything yet. Well, let me allow program execution to continue along here. So I'm going to add the Belgariad, add the Chamber of Secrets, and so on. So we'll do that, and you can see that the yellow is an indicator that things are changing. And as I add each of these objects, then the ID shows up in here. What's really happening is, for this particular one, book Lord of the Rings, that's a variable storing the number 19. There it is, the ID, 19. So that number 19 is being added to the array list. Of course, 19 is the location information of that book. 28, well, that corresponds to the Belgariad. Yep, there it is, ID 28. So this array list consists of a list of location information. If you were programming in C or C++, oh, it would be a list of pointers, addresses. In Java, of course, we can't do that. Now, I'm going to come back up to this button that I talked about earlier, Show Logical Structure. I'm going to click it. And notice that, I'll just close this down for a moment, notice that list of books and array list, oh, it just looks like an array. Well, that's sort of the simplified view. When I take this, that shows me how it's really structured, how it's really organized. List of books is really a reference to, that is 36, an array list object. The array list object has a reference to element data, and it's located at 45. When I open that up, there it is. So if I turn this off, or turn this the other way again, I just see it as if it was an array. I don't see the real detailed structure to what I'm working with. In this course, data structures, I think we need to reveal all of the details. So I'm going to recommend that you always set this so that you get to see what's inside there. And that's the end of this part of the lecture.